Hello everyone, I'm MVL and I'm back and welcome to another episode of Game Hunting. I'm here at Faceless Monkey, our first destination inside Pannier Market in Truro and as you can see the shelves are stacked with a ton of retro goodness. You've got PSP games there, Pokemon on the Nintendo 3DS, original Xbox, Game Boy, Wii, GameCube, PlayStation, PlayStation 2 and some more Wii on the side there. Tons of games all over the place. Down here we've got a cool Game Boy bag and a Master System game for Sonic the Hedgehog. Loose Game Boy cartridges, Game Boy Color cartridges and Game Boy Advance. Original Xbox, there's a Game Boy Color there which is purple. Getting a closer look at the Game Boy cartridges. Tons of fine games on offer there. And there's some Atari 2600 games here. A purple GameCube. Some great 2600 games there including Vanguard. You've got a Mega Drive game in the background there. I think that was a wrestling game. A PlayStation 1 there, Dreamcast controller. Mist Exile there on the PC. And check this out, they have moved over to the slot next to them and admittedly at the time of recording they have just started filling this out. I'm excited to see what the finished result will be and I'm very happy to see a regular haunt of mine doing well and expanding and that's good for me as someone who goes out looking for video games. As you can see they've got some stuff here including some Nintendo consoles, a GameCube, a Wii and a Super Nintendo as well as an NES over there as well. We've got a couple of joysticks here along with House of the Dead 2 on the Dreamcast. There's a Dreamcast Zapper there as well and they'll be adding more stuff over here as time moves on so I can't wait to see it when it's done. I'm digging into some loose controllers here. There are just piles of controllers lined up here and you know I do love diving into these tangled boxes. You never know what you're going to find. There's a PlayStation controller. Here's a weird PlayStation Viper 2 controller which seemed pretty cool. I should have picked that up because it actually looks pretty badass. We also have another joystick here and over here we have a Super Nintendo Quick Shot controller. I should have picked that up as well but what I did end up picking up was the Terminator for the Sega Game Gear. I'm excited about that. I also picked up Army Men Sarge's Heroes on the PlayStation 1. This game looked really cool so I'm glad to pick that up as well and I also picked up Colony Wars Vengeance for the PlayStation 1. This is a space shooter and I've already got a couple of games from that series so I had to grab that when I saw it and I also picked up Moho as well which I believe is known overseas as Ball Breakers. This is a very interesting game, very creative concept so I had to grab that and Shadow Gunner as well for the PlayStation 1 as well. A mech combat game, The Robot Wars and man this game's pretty fun as well so cool to pick that up. I got got these Game Boy Advance cartridge cases as well and I also picked up this air pad for the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. This is a motion controller for the PlayStation which is really interesting and it also came with this different changeable faceplate as well. Our next destination is Harry's Toy Chest in Truro and they also had a great selection of games to check out as well, both old and new, including Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo DS and Wii games as well. Alongside them there are some Wii U games and PlayStation 4 games and the next stack along has PlayStation 3 games and just below them there are some Xbox 360 games and the next stack along has PlayStation 2 with original Xbox below that. Here's some PlayStation 4 games on display and new Super Mario Bros Wii but what caught my eye was Super Mario Galaxy 2 packaged with this DVD. Another thing that catches your eye is this cabinet in the center loaded with great stuff including a PlayStation 4 wireless controller, PlayStation Move controllers and a boxed PlayStation Vita. There's Yoshi's Crafted World on the Nintendo Switch there, a boxed Game Boy Pocket, there's Mario Odyssey on the Switch loose, there's also Diddy Kong Racing boxed on the Nintendo 64 and Crash Bandicoot Warped on the PlayStation 1. They also have some great Game Boy Advance cartridges including Zelda and Pokemon as well. At the bottom of the cabinet they had some controllers including Wiimotes and a boxed PlayStation 4 Slim. At the back side of the cabinet they had some Game Boy Advance games in the box including Crash XS 
And at the bottom of the back side of the cabinet they had these beautiful Nintendo 64 controllers. What I ended up picking up was Crash Bandicoot XS on the Game Boy Advance, Super Mario Galaxy 2 on the Wii. This came in a package with this Super Mario Galaxy 2 for beginners DVD and this was sealed. Our next destination is the British Heart Foundation in Newquay. This is a charity shop and this is why you check these places out. You never know what you're going to find because in a bowl inside of there I found these PlayStation 2 controllers at £2 each, an official one and a Mad Cat's Dual Force controller and there were also memory cards here as well. There's a PlayStation 1 memory card for £1 and a transparent memory card as well for just one pound. This is a great deal and this is exactly why you check these places out because you never know what you're going to find. And speaking of never knowing what you're going to find, I also found this, a Mr. Screw. He's ready and waiting to perform. Uh, this guy who just loves to screw around as it says, a gift to liven up any dinner party. Um, <laughs> it will pop your cork for sure. This is a novelty corkscrew for opening corked bottles and you've got to give it up for the packaging. They really went all in and it's even better on the side. Really draws your eye. Our final destination is Cancer Research in Newquay, another charity shop. This is very much a regular haunt of mine and they had tons of stuff. Check out this Model 2 Mega Drive with two controllers. They are in great condition. There's also two PlayStation 2 memory cards over there and there's Pit Fighter for the Mega Drive. The guy on the front cover I think looks like John Cena. There's LHX Attack Chopper for the Mega Drive as well and they had Mega Drive games all over the place hidden away. I didn't get them all on camera but there were a lot of those which was really cool to see. They also had some consoles, there's an Xbox 360, a PlayStation 2 with two controllers as well, and a PlayStation 3 with a controller. There's a Wii in the background there. They also had this, an original Xbox with Xbox 360 games bundled with it. I thought this was really funny, but they do know me quite well here, so I was able to correct that mistake for them. I picked out some original Xbox games that they did have and had them bundle those with the console instead. And I do think with new Xbox consoles coming out in the future with even more awkward and unintuitive names, this sort of thing may be more common in the future, so watch out for that. Looking back, that Wii actually had two Motion Plus controllers bundled with it, so it was a really great deal and I should have grabbed that. As you can see, there are Mega Drive games all over the place. There were even more hidden away that I didn't catch on camera. And here's a game I had to feature, The House of the Dead Overkill, a great light zapper style game on the Wii, and we have more of this. Now there must have been something going around with bric-a-brac in the area. There was also another mug next to that which I did not show on camera, which was an uncovered lady's chest. I'm not sure why they were displaying that sort of thing, but then again I've definitely found Stranger Things. They had lots of great games inside as well. There's Taito Legends 2 on the PlayStation 2, and here's Space Invaders Anniversary on the PlayStation 2. And at the back here, there's Taito Legends 2, which I was very excited to find. But unfortunately, there was no disc inside. Nevertheless, I still picked this up so I would have the case and the manual in case I did get the disc to complete it. There's Sonic Riders, a Sonic-themed racing game on the PlayStation 2, which I find kind of funny because Sonic, he's got to go fast anyway, so why does he need a hoverboard to go even faster? Here's Bust a Block on the PlayStation PlayStation 2, a breakout clone. I love this style of game. I find that shoot 'em up games and puzzle games are fantastic. They are great choices for a quick gaming fix. You can just pop them in and play and you don't have to commit that much time to get a good amount of enjoyment out of them. As you can see, they've got a lot of PlayStation 2 games. Here's some PlayStation 3 games as well, alongside Darksiders, Transformers, Pirates of the Caribbean, and behind that we have Most Wanted and Gran Turismo 4, as well as Ratchet and Clank there as well. Some more PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360 and original Xbox at the top here. There's Halo 2 and Star Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the Xbox One for just £2.50. They also had more original Xbox games but I had them bundle them with the console that was displayed in the window which was a good thing because it sold not long after and I'm glad someone didn't take a bunch of 360 games home and they wouldn't play on their original Xbox they purchased. Here's an interesting looking game on the Wii called Wing Island. It reminds me a little bit of Pilot Wings and I regret not picking that up. 
I did, however, grab Mortal Kombat Armageddon on the Wii. Motion controls are great for a lot of types of game, but are they good for fighting games? Here's a game for the PC called Elite Dangerous for only £1.50. Now this is some kind of special edition that I don't know anything about, but I believe this is a Kickstarter exclusive, so I did pick that up. What I ended up grabbing was Mega Games 1 for the Mega Drive, Jungle Strike for the Mega Drive as well, and Streets of Rage for the Mega Drive as well. I also picked up that Elite Dangerous for the PC. I think it is some kind of Kickstarter exclusive. Mortal Kombat Armageddon for the Wii as well. And finally, I grabbed Star Wars Battlefront 2. Let's see in total everything I picked up. So what did I pick up? Well, first of all, from Faceless Monkey in Truro, I picked up the Terminator for the Sega Game Gear. This is a cool side-scrolling game. I believe the Terminator game to get is probably on the Sega CD or Mega CD as we call it over here. But this game's pretty cool as well. And you know, whenever I find a Game Gear game that's pretty cheap, I've got to pick it up because it's a great handheld system. Next up, we have Army Men Sarge's Heroes for the PlayStation 1. It's real combat with plastic men. Now I believe this game series descended from the Toy Stories franchise. It's a pretty cool third person shooter and I'm glad to pick it up. This game is really fun. Next up we have Colony Wars Vengeance for the PlayStation 1. Great space shooter game series. I have some other games in this series. So when I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up. Very fun. And I do like my space shooters as well. Next up, we have Moho on the PlayStation 1. I believe this game is known as Ball Breakers Overseas. And it's an interesting game. The story is that uh, you are prisoners who have been converted to these robotic constructs with balls at the bottom of them. And you fight in gladiatorial style battles. You have uh, arena battles, you also have races you can do. It's a very interesting game, so uh, Moho is pretty cool on the PlayStation 1. Next up we have Shadow Gunner on the PlayStation 1. This is a mech battle game. Pretty cool third person shooting action. It's actually pretty fun. Um, I do love blasting robots to bits as you may have seen in the previous game I just showed you. So yeah, pretty fun. Glad to pick that up as well. Next up we have a PlayStation 1 motion controller. This is the AirPad. And I was really excited when I saw this. Less so after trying it because it's not that great. It also came with a uh, different faceplate you can put on there as well. And uh, I would have liked to have got this in the box, but I didn't really need the uh, didn't really need the instructions to figure out how to use it. Um, it doesn't work that great. I've tried using it. You kind of uh, kind of steer it like this. Um, interesting idea. I don't think they really perfected motion controls until you got to the Wii, and they were pretty good on that. So yeah. Nice to pick this up, not so great to actually use it. Uh, next up, I got a bunch of uh, Game Boy Advanced cartridge cases. I got all five of these for £2, which uh, seems like a pretty good deal. I like to have these things. They're very useful for protecting your Game Boy Advance games and uh, keeping the cartridges nice and out of dust and any deterioration or anything like that. So pretty glad I picked them up and £2 seemed like a good price to me. So next up, uh, from Harry's Toy Chest intro, I picked up uh, Crash Bandicoot XS for the Game Boy Advance. Now, I believe this game overseas is known as Crash Bandicoot The Great Adventure. It's its own game, actually. It has uh, different uh, gameplay to the PlayStation 1 version, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, very excited about this. Love Crash Bandicoot. Didn't have this game, so I had to pick it up. Uh, after that, I also picked up the uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2. This edition comes with a DVD on how to play the game as well and it is in great condition. So the, uh, the DVD itself is sealed. The DVD here is sealed but actually I was able to find an unsealed one in a charity shop for only £2 and the funny thing about this is the one I found in the charity shop had an additional disc inside. It also had a game disc in there which it should not include. Uh, which was pretty awesome. So now I have a spare game disc as well as a how to play disc so I can figure out how to play it as well. So now I have a sealed one as well so that's pretty cool. And I also have uh, the game here as well which which feels like the uh, like the how to play DVD is sealed. This feels like it's almost never been used. It's minty and uh, it has everything in there as well which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I'm glad to find that. 
And uh, next up from the British Heart Foundation in Newquay, I picked up a bunch of things. So for two pounds, I got this uh, PlayStation 2 Black Controller. Uh, two pounds is a very good price, but the risk you get when buying stuff in charity shops, of course, is uh, sometimes they don't work. I believe one of the buttons on this was not functioning. And that is also the case in the uh, Mad Cats Dual Force Controller that I picked up. One of the buttons on this Again, I think does not work properly, but two pounds is a very good price for both of these. And I do need more PlayStation 2 controllers because man, I just I just keep going through them. Um, yeah, you know, often things like the rumble will break on a PlayStation 2 controller, one of the buttons are not as securely built as, you know, systems like the SNES. I'm sure you could drive a car over one of those controllers and it will still be fine. Um, I also picked up some memory cards. So I picked up a PlayStation 1 memory card here for just one pound, which is always good. You always need more memory cards. So I'm glad to pick that up. And I also got a, uh, transparent memory card here as well for the PlayStation 1 also for around about one pound what happened to transparent stuff you know you used to get transparent controllers transparent consoles and uh, you know all of that sort of stuff what happened to that where did it go since the 90s what happened to transparent stuff oh, let's bring it back uh, from cancer research on Yuki I got some mega games uh, first of all I got a uh, jungle strike for the Sega Mega Drive um, awesome shooting game it has a kind of isometric view to it as did uh, as did desert strike which this is the sequel to it lets you know that on the front of it and uh yeah cool game i've always preferred traditional scrolling shooters rather than uh, isometric ones but this is still a really good game i also picked up mega games one for the Sega Mega Drive. I believe this was known as Triple Score overseas, but uh, over here in the UK, we had Mega Games 1, 2, and 3. Um, compilation cartridge for the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, this includes Columns, Super Hang On, and World Cup Italia 90. Columns is a really awesome game, so glad to have that. And I didn't have this compilation cartridge. And I also found in the box, Streets of Rage. Very happy about that. Uh, I didn't have this in the box by itself. I actually had this in Mega Games 2, I think it is, alongside some other awesome games. And it's in great condition. It's got uh, the manual and the cartridge in there, so I'm very happy about that. Glad to have this on its own cartridge in my collection as well, because Streets of Rage is an absolutely fantastic side-scrolling beat-em-up game. All right, next up we have bust a block on the PlayStation 2, a block busting game. It's just breakout and you know, one of many variations. I've been picking up a lot of games like this recently. And uh, this is really fun though, very well done. Despite looking like a budget title, it's very fun. And that's what I like about this type of game. You can just put it in and play it for a little bit and get your enjoyment out of it. So very fun, bust a block on the PlayStation 2. I picked up uh, Sonic Riders as well, which is a Sonic racing game. He's got to go fast, but apparently he wants to ride a hoverboard. He's a big fan of Back to the Future, even though he's really fast in himself. I don't know how much faster Sonic could get, but you know, you've got to go fast. Sonic Riders. And then I picked up uh, Taito Legends. I already had this on the original Xbox, I believe, but I think this had a different art card inside. Uh, which was pretty awesome. So there you go. It has a uh, disc and manual inside of there. It's got this art card right here for Rainbow Islands, which is pretty cool. And uh, they also had Taito Legends 2, which didn't unfortunately have the disc, which was a real shame. But I still picked up the case for that in case I do manage to grab the disc for that later on. Anyway, uh, they did, however, have uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, which had the disc inside of it. And uh, this is an interesting game. It uses the Wii remote if you'd like to use it that way. I do enjoy motion controls, but not so much in a fighting game. It also has Motor Combat, <laughs> which is a racing game like Mario Kart style, which is not what I think of when I think about Mortal Kombat. But regardless, uh, pretty cool to find this. And it was a good price as well. Uh, speaking of a good price, I found this game. Elite Dangerous on the PC, uh, it, some sort of space shooter, but I believe uh, the physical version of this only came out through Kickstarter, so that was pretty cool to find this, and it does have uh, it does have a disc in here, and the manual, and the artwork is very nice as well, so that's pretty cool, I pretty much picked it up just because it was cheap, and in the same vein, I also picked up uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the original Xbox because that was only £2.50. And I really can't complain about that because I know this game goes for more than that. And you know what? This was really fun. I did enjoy the uh, single player on this. 
and I uh, definitely got my money's worth for £2.50 for Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the Xbox One. And there you have it. Those are my pickups from this episode of Game Hunting. If you like the video, please leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And if you'd like to, you can also support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership. Thank you for watching. I've been MVL and I will catch you next time.